My name is Tim McCloskey. I'm the president of the town council here in Centerville. Yep. Uh, with me is Jeff Morgan. Probably most of you know him. He's one of our newest council members. He's been elected to live in Northbrook as well. Uh, we've got Chris Nedwick, who is the general manager. Uh, uh, regional manager. Regional for manager of E1. Uh, they're the manufacturers of the pumps. We've got Jim Williams, who is the installer, contractor, authorized representative of E1. Right? Is that right? Not installer. Not oh, installer. <laughs> yeah, we rep the equipment. Okay. Yep. Howard Helen, uh, who is the Northbrook HOA manager. Um, Kit Matthews is here. He's the director of public works, and Steve Walls is here as well. Uh, we're going to kind of have this as a Q&A. We are videotaping it. This is in the Queen Anne's County planning room, so we are going to be videotaping this tonight. So it will be available you know, for your neighbors who aren't going to be here, for other people who are going to be moving in. Uh, we do ask that you kind of speak up when you uh, ask questions. We might be repeating repeating the questions as well, just so that we can make sure we hear them. Um, I wanted to just quickly talk a little bit about uh, how the planning process works, how this all you know, came about, as far as I can tell, right? I didn't live in Centerville at the time. I wasn't involved in the town council when it was put on. This, and, and just from, from a housekeeping standpoint, this meeting is going to go until about 8.30, and then I believe, Howard, you have a HOA meeting that you're going to have as well. I'm going to try to wrap things up by about 8.15 or 8.20, and then if there's any extra questions, we can do that. Um, if there are, are non-Northbrook uh, or, or you know, grinder pump conversations or questions, if we have time at the end, the council's happy to answer them. We've got the chief of police and the lieutenant in the back as well. If you have questions about public safety, you know, we're certainly going to make ourselves available uh, afterwards as well. So when we get, get going on this, you know, if there's questions that are directed to the town, the town will be you know, do our best to answer them. Same thing for, uh, for Jim and Chris and, and Howard as well. So Northbrook as a community was, was a farming, you know, it was a farm. And so the, the, the parcel was annexed into town uh, back, I think it was 2001 or so. Uh, originally it had, had been planned to be like a 50 unit development with a golf course. Once it got annexed in, it was the density uh, availability got so much greater. So, it was, so, so the, the builder at the time, the owner at the time, decided they wanted to put in 430 homes instead of 50 homes. So the way that the development process works is the developer makes a proposal to the town, to the planning commission uh, in the town, and they go through kind of a discussion and a, a back and forth, and they ultimately come up with what is going to be the plan. Uh, there are several agencies that are not within the town that are responsible to sign off on that. In particular, when you're talking about water systems and sewer systems, the county are the ones that manage the, the master water and sewer uh, plan. Um, so when the, the decision, I believe, or the, the proposal was to put in a grinder pump system versus a gravity felt, uh, um, fed system, uh, the town had to sign off on it, the planning commission within the town had to sign off on it, uh, and the county and the state had to sign off on it. it was, it's an approved system, and I'm sure, as, as Jim will talk about later, uh, and, and probably Chris as well, grinder pump systems happen, and they're all over the place. Ken Island uh, is actually putting in a, a significant system now. It's a little bit different, but it's, it's the same kind of concept where you're going to have to grind all this stuff up and, and use a, a vacuum to get it out versus... Uh, uh, versus just gravity. The way that the lay of the land is, so the geography of Northbrook compared to where our water treatment facility is, our wastewater treatment facility, if you were going to do a uh, gravity fed system, and Kip, if I'm, if I'm stepping on my toes here, please you know, tell me that I'm incorrect. It would have required a, a, a few, at least three pump stations. So the wastewater would go down a little ways and it would have to be pumped up and pumped up and pumped up. And when you're talking about infrastructure, all of those things would have to have been put in first. Okay, so before one house got sold, all that infrastructure would have to have been put in first. Much like when they phased it in, they had to put all the stormwater systems in for phase one, and they had to put the ponds in, and all of those things are expensive to do. Okay, so that I believe is one of the reasons, cost is one of the reasons that the developer decided that they were going to go with the grinder pump system. Instead of having to fork over that money initially, right? they said that, hey, we'll put in grinder pump systems, and as we sell homes, the individuals will be able to pay for their individual pump. Right? We'll put in the, the smaller infrastructure versus the large pump stations. 
so that's a little bit about how, how it works. You know, it is a, a Maryland state approved system. They are still putting them in now. They've been in for, uh, in, in other parts of the state and other parts of the country and really in the world, they've been used uh, for what, 50 years, 40 years, something like that. About 50 years. About 50 years, okay. Um, I do have some frequently asked questions that we're gonna pass out here as well. We also have a sign-in sheet. If you would, you know, if you haven't had a chance to sign in, we'll pass this around as well. We're gonna ask that you sign in. That way we'll have the ability to send you an email. Uh, if you haven't already signed up for the town, uh, the town email blast, for example, one came out tonight. It gives you information about what's happening in the town. Uh, we've got some road closures this weekend, so it just will tell you a little about what's going on. So I would encourage you to uh, fill these out. And you're welcome to take one of these grinder pump uh, things home as well. And if you do sign up, we'll also email it to you uh, as well. Uh, so I'm going to pass another one of these out. If you have signed in, great. If not, just kind of pass it around. Tim, there's two, two different sign-in sheets. Because Howard has yeah, one. I sent one around for those. Okay. Yeah. Ways but I think there's a bunch of people that have come in since then that they no, may not have gotten on it. You guys haven't signed in, pass it, pass it along. If anybody needs a pen, let me know as well. All right, so I was going to kind of turn it over to you, Jim, and see if you have any anything you wanted to present, or we could just start with questions and answers. What is a system? So I appreciate the uh, introduction, Tim. Uh, my name is Chris Nedwick. I'm with Environment One Corporation. I am uh, regional manager for uh, our sewer systems business in 12 U.S. states and seven Canadian provinces. Uh, been involved with low-pressure sewer in varying capacities with Environment One since uh, roughly 2008. And um, the question is, what is a, a low-pressure sewer system? A low-pressure sewer system is a network of small diameter pipes that uh, follow the contour of the land and can be installed uh, at times at a fraction of the cost of a gravity system, which you touched off on very well, by the way. Um, and uh, the grinder pump is different than the system itself. We, we don't consider ourselves a, a pump company per se. We are a system provider. So the pipe network is the system, okay? And the grinder pump is the thing that makes it work along with adequate sizing of the pipe system itself. Um, low pressure sewer systems, uh, as Tim alluded to, have been in use roughly for 50 years. We pioneered uh, the concept uh, in the marketplace. Uh, we're located in upstate New York in Niskayuna. Uh, we do business in 43 countries. Uh, every single day we connect roughly 150 households to uh, any one sewer system somewhere in the world. Um, the reliability of, of this system is very dependent upon best practices, quality of installation, and uh, really ongoing management of the system itself. Uh, where we've noticed the best uh, or the lowest operation and maintenance costs is where we've had certified practices up front making sure that all of the installations are done properly in accordance with our standards and specifications, uh, that there's proper inspection taking place and that proper uh, materials are being used and proper components as well. And then from that point forward on an ongoing basis where we, we find we have the best uh, uh, results where we have a single point of contact or one agency that can kind of uh, oversee the system, if you will, uh, or at least be uh, accountable or responsible uh, to ensure that uh, authorized personnel are uh, the only one in this case uh, would be Fremire and Associates that are actually working on the grinder pumps and that we can work with on a long-term basis to ensure that goals are met and we get cost of ownership as low as possible. Uh, we don't like repeat customers from a service standpoint. Uh, when we're doing our job properly is when we can demonstrate there's uh, the lowest possible cost of ownership available. And uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, our local distributor is Fremont Associates. They've been associated with Environment One since the mid-1970s, I believe, or late 1970s. Probably one of the <laughs> oldest distributors that we have anywhere in the world. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, as much knowledge, if not more, than any distributor that we have. Uh, Jim has been involved in varying capacities. Uh, he has a service background, as do I, which I think makes us uniquely qualified to answer some of the questions that you folks may have, because I understand some of them are service-related. So we're here to help you. We're here to support you. Uh, look forward to an open dialogue. And uh, as far as, how, you know, how the low-pressure sewer system came to be here, uh, we weren't involved in that decision. You know, Freemire was not. It was probably a decision that a local developer made, I think, as you alluded to a little bit. Um, but it's here, and it's going to be here. And as long as it's here and it's an E1 system, we will support it 150%. So we're looking forward to, uh, you know, having a constructive dialogue about how to address any concerns that you have from this point moving forward. So um, hopefully that covers all the bases you were looking for. Give us for. a rough idea of how long the pump should last. 
Well, that's a good question, and it comes up pretty frequently. So mean time between service calls demonstrated is uh, anywhere between eight and 10 years, okay? So that means every eight to 10 years, there's a service call of some type, typically. Okay, that doesn't mean you need a new pump once every 10 years. That could be a small repair, it could be a more significant repair. Um, pumps move water, okay, and it's an electrical mechanical device. Um, so it is subject to wear and tear and things like that. A lot of it depends on the flow rate and how it's being used, what's going down the drain. Uh, was it installed properly? So to answer your question, it ranges, it varies. It's no different than any other electrical mechanical device like a car, for example. Um, you know, we have grinder pumps that last for 30 years without an issue. Uh, we have grinder pumps that may last only a couple years depending on circumstances. Okay, that's why we focus on proper installation, which again, uh, really didn't occur, I don't think, in this case early on, if I may say so. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, if the quality of installation is there and the proper management is there, we know that we can stretch it out significantly. So to answer your question, it really varies. It's, it's, but we know uh, from looking at the entire spectrum, okay, the whole arc of all of the grinder pumps that are out there that we manufacture, the mean time between service calls is between eight and 10 years. Yeah, I mean, did you want to have anything, talk about anything about, you know, how the, how it works and, and what the system actually is, what it consists of? Actually, what you have is uh, your, your grinder pump is, is like an appliance to your house. It's a pump that sits outside the home, wastewater comes out, uh, there's a control panel attached to it on the outside of the wall, and it goes down the power cord down to the pump. Uh, the pump grinds up your sewage, sends it down the street, collectively as all the units pump little bits at a time, 15 gallons at a shot, it pushes it and it just creates a little pressure and pushes it down and back up and out. I mean, that's the cut and dry of it. Um, we're the manufacturer's rep, we do the service work on it. Uh, some of you, I'm sure we've been to your house once, if not twice before, but um, I'd like to know whatever questions you got. Some of them I already know. We had some questions put out here in the frequently uh, asked questions. So uh, any questions you have, we're, we're here to answer. Yeah, why don't we, you know, Howard, unless you had anything you wanted to add, you know, let's let's open it up. Um, Queen Anne's County Television has asked that you kind of speak up when you're asking the questions. I may actually also repeat them just so that we get it, uh, we get it on tape and everybody can hear uh, in the audience. Yes, ma'am. I really welcome this meeting because I didn't even know what the grinder was in my yard until after maybe 10 years of living in the house. We've been in our home for 17 years now. The grinder pump has never been serviced. So I really am concerned about that. So I, I want to know, should we service that pump immediately? We haven't had any issues, but I looked at 16 plus years, and I'm on the 17th year. And I'm really concerned. How about your pump? Can I just start real quick? You know what? Um, I think it's great that you've been here that long and, and you know this is one of the issues and one of the reasons that we're having this meeting is to provide that education right I mean people will move into their home and have no idea that it's there so it's one of the goals of the town to be able to provide when somebody new moves in uh, you know this information have it on our website send them a letter hey welcome to town you know by the way this is a system that you have here's how to take care of it and, and here are the things you need to watch out for because it's kind of sad because we built the house new. Nothing was explained to us about a grinder pump. I asked my husband, what is that thing out there? What is that by my bay window? So that should never happen. Yeah. That should um, never happen. So, ma'am, thank you for that, uh, that statement and the question. And I would answer it in short by saying don't do anything to it. Uh, there's, there's no preventative maintenance that's required. Uh, if you've had the pump for 17 years, it tells me the installation is probably pretty good and that you're conscientious about what you put down the drain. Um, you know, uh, there's a list of things that, that uh, shouldn't go down the drain that really uh, uh, is consistent with uh, guidelines that are put out by the Water Environment Federation, which is an industry organization. Things like kitty litter, uh, gravel, sand, hair clippings, uh, diaper socks, oil, grease, glass, you know, petroleum products. They shouldn't go down the drain with a grinder pump, and they shouldn't go down the drain if you have gravity or a septic tank either, frankly. So uh, there's no preventative maintenance required. If you don't have an alarm, there's really no need to look at that station and there's no need to be concerned, keep doing what you're doing. Um, however, some homeowners and businesses like to err on the side of caution and can work with an organization like Freemeyer who might come and look at the cover, understand what, what equipment is there and, and, and just give you uh, some reassurance 
uh, as to whether or not it should continue to last. But um, keep keep doing what you're doing. Don't worry about it. What you what you should look for is as this this rotor. It's a stator and a rotor. It's a rotor and a rubber boot that goes around it. As that wears out over time, goes on again, depending on usage and what goes through it, it'll start to the pump will run longer, and it'll take time to catch up. So if you're doing laundry. Um, or you have a garden tub and you let a whole bunch of water loose at one time When the pump was new it would pump out 15 gallons in about a minute as it wore out over the years Maybe it takes two or three minutes to pump out that same 15 gallons as it's starting to wear out You should get an alarm and then it should go away if your alarm doesn't go away in 10 minutes then you have a problem stop using water and, and Give us a call right, but when you do hear the alarm pay attention to it and, and call us and say, Mr. Williams, we've, we've got an alarm. It comes on and it goes off, and we'll help you troubleshoot over the phone. You know, do we need to come out or not? This is part of trying to save money. If I know my guy's over there, you know, two, three days a week, he's in that development. If I know he's going there, at that point, it costs money to get there. Everybody's car runs on fuel. Hey, while you're there, what everybody who's got a bill it's travel or whatever that that cost can be reduced and split we found quite a few work orders where we did that on so pay attention when that alarm goes off give us a call and we'll try to come out there when we're in the neighborhood to take a look at it but. one of the things i would ask is, is when you do uh, ask a question just say what street you're on you don't have to say the address just so that we can get an understanding uh, of of where you know where you might where your house is House on Meadowcroft, and my question is: Is if you guys are in the neighborhood a lot, is there any type of like a maintenance thing that a lot of us could get in on just to get it inspected before the alarm goes off, and we're stuck on holiday weekend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. There's stuff we could do. We do service contracts. I think out of uh, the we had a meeting a long time ago. We went and looked at some of them. We come up with three people. In the whole community that have service contracts, um, they're not. It's not a cheap endeavor. It's a three, three hundred and some dollars. The more people that are involved in that, the less that number comes down. We we know how many pumps, how often they break. They're going to break. There's no two ways about it. Are you prepared to take care of it when it is? Nobody wants me rolling up to their door. The last thing you want to see is a twelve hundred dollar bill for my shining face to be up there. Play, yes, three hundred twenty-two dollars a year, and that covers time, travel, labor, new pump, whatever you need. When we're there, if you have an alarm, we go away. What is it that they check when you do your service for three hundred? What is it that they actually do? Do they take the pump out and see if it's pumping so many gallons per minute, or what? They'll troubleshoot that. They'll troubleshoot it. Throttle so test it. What do they do? But it's only in the. What do they do? Problem. Don't tell me they troubleshoot it. Do they take the out of the hole and check it or did they what did they do for three hundred dollars he comes to you a year okay he's not coming to your house every year just like he explained it's maintenance free until you have a problem if you have an alarm you call us the service contract replaces repairs covers all the travel costs and whatever pieces parts basically if you need a new pump we stick a new pump in there. If we have a rebuilt pump, we'll stick it in there. Uh, whatever it takes to fix that pump. If we can fix it on site, troubleshooting, I, I, we teach a three-day class in troubleshooting to people to do repairs. So I'd love to go into detail on how to troubleshoot a grinder pump. That's what these guys do. Uh, I was also told that if that pump leaves that house, that residence, that pump comes back to that house. Is that true? In most cases, yes. Not all the time. In most cases. Why? What does it most cases mean? Your pump is I mean, issued to you. If you're going to take my pump and fix it, I get a rebuilt pump. Okay. How do I know it's as good as the one that was in there? The, the, when I come to your house, Kenny, not me, I, I'm not coming to your house. <laughs> Kenny comes to your house and he pulls your pump out. That pump is logged with a serial number. That gotcha. serial number tells him everything about that pump. Got it. He doesn't take that pump back to the shop and fix it. If he can't fix it on site and he takes that back to the shop, you have, you're out of service. You have no sewage, which means you can't live in your house, you can't take a shower. What he does is he will take a pump out of his truck, 
with a serial number on it that is listed as one of our spare pumps. That pump goes in the hole, he takes your pump back to the shop, estimate, calls you, gets approval to fix it, and you say yay or nay. This is how much a new one is, this is how much it costs to rebuild it. Um, we do have cases where the people didn't, you know, they didn't have money and they said, well, I got a pump now, what's wrong with it? Well, it was one of my spares. It's probably been in five or six different homes. But if you want to keep that one, <laughs> you know, we'll make some kind of a deal with you. What was that one worth? We know by the serial number what was wrong with it originally, but it was a running pump when we left. That's kind of a gamble that I'm taking, leaving a spare, because if my spare's there and it breaks, I got to come back <laughs> and take care of that. So, I mean, there's there's a quite a few different ways to handle that. And what's the warranty on the new ones for the people that have just moved <clears throat> into Northrop? How what's the warranty on the, on the new grinder pump? Five years. So, if you get a rebuilt one, what's the warranty? Uh, Ninety days is a rebuilt. One. We've given up to a year, depending if I come back. I look at it case by case. If I have somebody who calls and says, hey, the guys have been here a couple times, you know, I don't need to, I had one, uh, Kim was out for with travel, you know, and she noticed on her bill, boom, uh, we, we reimbursed her her travel because, hey, we make mistakes too, but if I know about it, I can work with it. I've lived in Northbrook since December 2001, and I never had a problem until April of, um, April of 2013, and they put in a new stator, and about a month later, the stator went again, and it was suggested I have a new system put in, which I did. And I've had problems ever since then. Uh, um, uh, for, it went on for like three years, and um, let me see here, I'm trying to, in August of 2016, the system went off again, I had another stator put in. In February of this year, it went, the system went off again. I had another stator put in. That's when I called your company and expressed my view about the product and called, called Freemar. They came out, uh, like I said, a month later, one, one month later after uh, February, it came out and put in a new system at no cost to me. But it's always the stator. It's always the stator. It's just me and my wife that live in that house and I don't even use the garbage disposal and never, uh, if, it, if she uses it rarely. And yet, it's still, I have, I've had these problems. And you saying you have a warranty for five years? I've been, so I've coughed up like to over $700 to have that state of repair. How many, what, what street are you on? Bainbridge Avenue. You're, you're in the original section. Correct. Okay, all right. Um, Again, we'd have to look at it. What's your address? 142 Bambridge. Jason. 142. Wayne has yeah. come out, usually comes out. Right. And then the last time, because I complained so much, uh, he was there along with one of your fellows from the Eastern Shore, St. Charles County. So speaking hypothetically, and I uh, appreciate your frustration, I understand it. Um, so a stator is a wear item, should not wear that quickly, um, as evidenced by the fact that your original stator lasted for, I think, 13 years. 13 years. Um, My next so, neighbor has moved in shortly after I did. He's never had his replaced. Okay, so uh, just, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna sit up here and speculate, and I'm, I'm not gonna try to sugarcoat anything either. Um, but speaking theoretically, there, there's a number of different things that could lead to that type of re repeated failure. It's a, a bit of a red flag for me, and I'm, I'm not trying to put any focus on you whatsoever, so I just want to be clear about that. Um, that tells me maybe a system issue. Uh, if the pump is uh, pumping into, uh, and again, I'm not saying this is what ha occurred. I'm just giving you an idea of what it could be. Uh, a blockage in a lateral, a blockage in a force main, for example, uh, could lead to a repeated stator issue like that. Uh, infiltration in the tank where you've got sand and grit going into it. Uh, in contactor, I mean, it, it could um, be quite a few that, That's kind of a unique situation, and uh, the fact that you had repeated failures tells me that we should be uh, troubleshooting it and looking at it and having a better understanding so that you, you won't continue to throw money at it. We don't want that. Yeah, they pulled the whole system out the last time and spent almost all day going through, through everything that's there. Did right. they but find I, anything? And No. And that, they didn't bill you for that either, correct? That one they did. Okay. Been okay. And, he, and they were there all day. Okay. So, so right. Jim, would, would the check valve start to fail? Affect that 
Stay here. Is there, isn't I, I, a check valve with the system inside the tank? There is a check valve in the pump. Uh, check valve, I, it would go to a dead head. You could have a situation where that happens. Most definitely, I've got one sitting right up here where it's intermittent. We had one of the homes we were at. We were at that home nine times, something like that, before we actually could make it happen. And then once we did, instantly we knew what it was. But is it going to cost me if it determines it's at the blockage there? Is it my fault or the uh, system's <coughs> fault or what? And you mentioned the five-year warranty. Why, why am I paying it? And you, if there's a five-year five -year warranty, I just told them it's two years. When was your, well, two years is the standard on that pump. That's what the factory gives, yeah. a two-year. When this was bought, this system was bought, and it started out in 2001, they got a five-year warranty in the original, and that five-year warranty has been honored for like 16 years. That <laughs> we continue when a new pump goes in to stick with that. So, and you moved in your home when? December 2001. One, and your first call was? Um, 2013. 2013. 12 years. Correct. Okay. But, but, the, the but ever since then. The service afterwards, <coughs> is there, there was an issue where something was found. The new system. And, and you got a new pump put in? A new pump. Okay. So that, that new pump should be under the five-year warranty. Have you paid anything since that new pump was put in? Uh, I no. paid at least twice that uh, they came out. Uh, in August of 2016, I paid money. You know, I think it was over $300. In the beginning of February uh, 2017, I paid over another $300. Okay. Well, I'll... I'll I have to pull your file and look at your file uh, to be able to determine, you know, where we were, what they were. Each one of the reports has everything written on it, what they found there. If I open the report and I don't want to speculate on it, but if it says I found sand in, sand in the stator, say there's a clean out cap off at your house and the rainwater's coming in, you have more flow, that creates more flow, you have more sand. Not saying that's the case, I don't know. But there's situations like that. Clean up, what kind of clean up? Are you just speculating? Yeah, I'm just saying situations. Uh, you may have clean out. Some of them are a little further away. I think all yours are closer. Why is Freemeyer the only supplier for grinder pumps? In so, so we, we get that question quite a bit. We, uh, so we don't work with reps. Um, you know, we work with distribution. So these guys service, they stock, uh, they support, and they specify, right? They work with engineers, they work with end users. Um, it's we require a degree of focus from our distributors to take care of end users that no other company does. And uh, frankly, if we had, you know, uh, just a bunch of guys <coughs> representing you, God, God bless you, we wouldn't have the level of focus that we require as part of our business strategy. So, um, no, I mean, you can call anybody you want to, to work on a grinder pump. It doesn't okay. have to be free. I don't have the key to my grinder pump, though. Whoa, well, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, under under warranty, as though it would have to be Freemeyer. Yeah, it under warranty, or or, a, or an authorized service center, yeah. or somebody that's trained that works with Freemeyer. After five years, you don't have a key. I mean, everyone here owns a house, so they don't have a key afterwards. Why don't Why doesn't everyone here have a key? Uh, that's a, uh, not a. I mean, it's a question for I think the township or the HOA. I mean, we well, provide we, keys. We make no. them, and we send them out of. Out of well, who, who put the lock on? That's what I'd like to know. Freemeyer? We, Freemeyer puts a lock on it, okay. and we put a lock on it, and when I come back, and I'm, that pump's under warranty, if your lock's cut off that panel, uh, I'm going to look very seriously at who was in there. What Second off, I don't want kids getting in the panel. Oh, that can just. What does that mean you're looking serious, like avoiding the warranty? Uh, possibly, well, most definitely. If somebody's been inside of there and shorted out a contactor or, or a PC board or something like that, I'm going to want to know... You know, why was somebody in there? Okay, so and if you said, hey, smoke was rolling out of the top of that panel, and I opened it up to kill the power to it, that's a legitimate answer. Sir, the reason there's a lock on the panel, we <laughs> actually provide them as well as a safety measure. Uh, the system is certified by UL, okay? Um, there's 240 volts of power inside that panel, okay? And if it's not locked, anybody, including a child, could just open it up so and come in contact with it. Like open one of my basement in here today. Disconnect. That usually falls make. on the homeowner. I mean, uh, listen. If some kid walks into their house and gets electrocuted, just like you know, if he took a 
took a screwdriver and stuck it in your socket, mm -hmm. right? So I guess what I'm asking is after the warranty, somebody goes through and cuts all the locks off? Mm -hmm. Or does, when, when yeah. we get notification that the warranty's up? If we get, how, do, how do people outside of like somebody who knows better know to take the lock off? Just curious. I mean, it's just one of many places it's, I have. Yeah, it's, it's your panel. You bought it. It belongs to you. If you have a shed in your backyard, <laughs> cut the lock off of it. If I'm going to be liable for it or responsible or have to warranty it, I want it locked up so nobody gets in it and tears it up. Well, Some think, have even little red tags. I, yeah. I think that um, that should probably be a notification sent out to everybody in the neighborhood explaining the lock. If you'd like, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that might not go to you, it might go to somebody else. I'm just saying it's a possibility. I have a bucket of locks and yeah. keys. <laughs> That's fine. Our but AC unit disconnect not uh, locked out. It's That's not my AC unit. All I'm saying is I'm not going to warranty safety. it. You said for safety. Right. On the other side of the house, the air conditioner's there, and it disconnects right there. Now, there's no lock on that one. It's not my air yeah, conditioner. We, we, I'm we, just saying. Every not, panel we make leaves with a lock. It, and we're going to keep UL, doing that. That's the safest way. If, and what happens when it ends up? I don't have a problem giving you a key if your unit's over five years old and you call me, say, Mr. Williams, hey, I'm out of warranty. I want a key to my panel. I'll mail you a key to your panel. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it at all. Cut, cut the lock off. Nobody knows what the lock is for. Right. That's what I'm saying is the lock is fine. It makes sense. Right. Yeah, it's under warranty. Yeah. I wouldn't want anybody touching something under warranty, too. Right. And what I'm saying is somebody needs to notify the the neighborhood that what that lock is for and not and like I'm saying it's not you could be somebody else could be homeowner association so uh, you know that's one of the things I just wrote down I think we'll, we'll probably add that onto onto our frequently asked questions and you know hopefully answer it who designed engineered the system and um, did you want to have any input into it uh, when I say system I mean outside of the pumps the infrastructure the piping the sizing the system, the whole Northbrook system, phase one, two, and three, were designed by McCrone Engineering. McCrone? McCrone. Yep. Okay. Um, with that design, did they come up with any uh, maintenance program or um, with the infrastructure of the, the neighborhood, including clean out, testing? Flushing, yes. Flushing? So whatever the requirements are of the state to put that in, right, McCrone would have worked with the state uh, in doing that. Uh, it was designed for, you know, 430, 432 homes, whatever it was. So, so when they built, you know, when they designed the system and it, when, it was, when it was signed off by the state, you know, McCrone would have designed it to those specifications and it was approved by the state and the county agencies. Okay, I got another question related to that. Um, is there a way that we can get that um, maintenance? information if we're assuming that McCrone had something going with it. Can we know what that is? And then um, has that maintenance been followed and is there a record of it? Uh, that would be in the docs with the developer. Sure. Uh, I, that's fine. I don't, yeah, I, I'm not that's, asking you for it. I'm I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have it, but I'll tell you where to get it. That would yeah. be in the, in the docs. Yeah, who would be responsible for the implementation of that maintenance? Well, that would be the town, wouldn't it? That's my question. Not, not all of the actual uh, no, no, this is, he, you're talking about oh, in the streets, yeah. right, in the streets. Right. I'm not aware that, you know, McCrone would have necessarily had any maintenance documents for, you know, maintaining the pipes in the streets. Okay. So we, so we don't know if there's like a flushing schedule for, or anything, we don't, we're not, we're not sure if there's anything for that. So the reason, the reason why I'm going through that is, uh, all right, stators. All right, the, the biggest problem that you, you seem to talk about is something getting in the pump or actually excessive head pressure. So what is the TDH, of the, the, the dynamic head, the head pressure of the pumps? 185 feet. 185 feet, which is 80 PSI. 86 80. pounds? Roughly, yeah, 86 pounds. Around 9 Somewhere pounds? Close. close to 80. Right. Can you explain this for the lay people? Because I know that I got really confused on head pressure and PSI and, and 180 and, and 80. Just... A real quick layperson's term of, of what that means. The guy does it real good. Jason, I want you to give the 101 head, without getting technical, okay. head pressure versus, and this is Jason, 
He's he's in our. Uh, Jason, would you mind sales. coming up? Uh, I hate to put you on the spot here, but it's just better no, for being paid. It's paid for. So what's, what is exactly the question? What is what is actually the, the biggest question I have is what how how much static pressure can be developed on the outlet of the pump, regardless of. Uh, That's a different question. Well, yeah, it's it's a slightly different. different. That's a different You're question. asking a mechanical I have, I have question. A questions. Yeah. Okay. Well, one is one is yes. The, I like the way you think. From a <laughs> from a system standpoint, right. systems are designed to stay below 180 feet of total pressure. Okay. Head. 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 Right. Which means 80 psi. From, from right. the pump, it, it should be able to go up 180 feet vertical. If you if you put a pipe on the pump and ran it 180 feet in the air, it should pump straight up in the air. Right. Correct. And they're supposed to work together as a group, as a system, and work together so that the system in whole does not exceed 180 feet of total system head. But you asked a separate question. Yeah, yeah. You, I did. Because I was going to let Chris answer well, that lead, question. Before he gets to that question, I'm going to lead back to your, <laughs> your intention of, because you apparently have done your homework, a velocity in the pipe is what I think where you're trying to get to. So quit beating around the bush. Let's say what it is. How fast is that water moving through the pipe and can sand stay in the pipe? Well, uh, my, my biggest issue is um, what the static pressure can get up to if there is some type of blockage in the system. How, how much pressure can that inch and a half, two inch line get up to if the check valve itself is stuck and that pump is deadheading? Or if there is a sudden slam on the system Will that shock the system as well? And how much would that cause disruption to the system itself? What you're talking about is, is hy hydraulic surge. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Fluid dynamics. <laughs> we can go there. Hydraulic surge in the system, I, I couldn't determine what that system's going to have. Does it have an effect? Most there definitely. The there, it, it, one pump, right? In a deadhead situation, which means for everybody else, Pumping against a dead valve, a closed valve, correct? Yeah, it's just like blowing an astrology finger on the end. Right. How much can your cheeks hold? How much so can your cheeks hold? Harder? I'm just going to stand up because I can't see. I want to want to be able to make eye contact. So the pump is capable of producing roughly 80, call it 85 psi. Okay, that's pressure inside the pipe. You you kept mentioning static, right? So typically static TDH is a function basically of static lift, right. okay, and flow and pipe size, okay. So you know, there's a lot of variables, as you mm -hmm. pointed out, okay? Yeah, yeah. So the pump just doesn't sit there and generate power until something pops. Right. That doesn't happen. It has a thermal overload in the motor that will kick in and cut the pump off before it can damage itself. Right. I'm not going to damage the pipe because the, if I can finish, oh, sorry. the operating pressure of a pipe is typically about 230 PSI max operating. It could probably Depending go the higher than that. Before. Is 400. So the, the, the question is not whether or not the, 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 the pipes are going to uh, burst as a result of an E1 running. It's the question is whether or not the pump is going to damage itself. And that thermal overload prevents that. Okay. So the, they don't just generate pressure until something gives. It, it doesn't work that way. And it's been that way for 45 years. So what, what is the recommended discharge piping off the E1? Is it, I mean, you're saying up to 200. Is it what? Um, it, it's Schedule 40 PVC or HTP? SDR-11 and 21 is what we see the most of. That's local code. We don't mm -hmm. deal with pipe. We can make recommendations. No, no, no. I, and, that's, I'm, and like I said, this is not an attack on E1. Yeah. I'm looking for information. Sure thing. Which yeah. means that if, you, if you're saying that uh, they shouldn't have installed PVC piping on the discharge of the pumps, then somebody else would probably be in here too. Um, no, I, we've got lots of systems that work with PVC and they work just fine. PVC, if it's glued properly, it's, you know, they last in low pressure sewer systems for 30 years or systems that I know about. Um, but um, we, we get that question a lot. How, you know, it is a pro cab pump, it's not a centrifugal pump mm -hmm. and you, you obviously know the difference. Uh, it, it is going to shut itself off. Well, you sound like you do, so you're doing a good job. Uh, it's going to shut itself. It's self-limiting in a sense. All right. Not a true self-limiting pump, but it has that limiting capability. All right. And there's a there's two thermals in there, one in the controls and one built into the motor windings. So in the event one of the thermals welds over unforeseen, yeah, that's, that's the other one's there. The, if the pump is deadheading and doesn't have any flow and it's, it's over amping, no. right? If it's right and it's drawn low, that's a deadhead. Right. right. Because I'm with you on the deadhead. I, I, it's a semi-progressing cavity pump. It, it, still doesn't, it still doesn't limit the pressure build up. The, the burst pressure. Right. Is uh, I, I don't think I even 
that's a tough one. I don't yeah. even think I, mean, I know what that is. You'd have to put a gauge on it. Yeah, you'd have to. Happens. You'd have to really. If you're, if, if for a, so for a peak flow situation, again, it's 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 kind of a, a theoretical cool. discussion because every system's different. Um, just throwing a dart, I'd say your average PSI on the high side for a low pressure sewer system, okay, uh, during a peak flow situation, because when everybody comes home from work and they're using the water, uh, you got more usage. So you mentioned TDH, it's a function of three things, so you got more flow in the system during a peak flow situation. Probably if it's, if it's 50, that's on the high side. So that's still significantly less than what the pump is equipped to handle. I'm, I don't know if that's helpful to, well, to you. My, my only issue is that uh, if somebody goes and, uh, you know, like we had, um, like a check valve fail sure. mm -hmm. or clogged, yeah. um, you know, eventually if the pump is, is running and the overflow does, oh, if there's some minimal amount of flow and it doesn't over amp, then Listen, you can still over That's I not know, a good situation. Speculations. Yeah. Right. Well, I know that in one instance somebody did have a valve shut off in the street. And I would tell you if you do have that situation, it should be investigated and it should be fixed because it's going to cause an issue eventually. Uh, not an ideal situation. If you have a blockage and a line, uh, that's that's not what these systems. They're designed to flow. They're not designed to deal with blockages. All right. And uh, during the quality um, of the install, mm -hmm. um, you guys have people that go out there and you during installation. We 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 don't. Or we is it um, like okay? So E1, you or Freemeyer. Freemeyer. Yep. So we'll do a startup. Um, what is it? Shepherd. Shepherd comes and installs them, right? I'm not sure. Who I, who That's I a function of the, of the developer, right? There's been several, I think, that have been okay. up there that have done it. Well, I won't put anybody's names out there, but okay. So the, the uh, pump installer for that site goes and brings the pump in. It, it's inspected, I'm assuming, by the county or by Centerville. And then does E1 have any say? Or do they verify that the installation was done correctly? So what we do, again, we're the manufacturer. We just make, this, we make what we call the station, just to help everybody understand what we're talking about. That's the panel, that's the, the pump, or what we call the core, right. and the tank. We make it in this in New York, and we ship it either directly to a customer or to our distribution, who then ships it to a customer. We don't do the installs. We don't physically do the inspections ourselves, typically, unless it's an E1 project that we have sold directly somehow with distribution. No, I just the only reason why I say it is because uh, previously you said the quality of install mm -hmm. was overseen and the proper installation was yep. overseen. So too. what we do, what we do as the manufacturer is we come up with guidelines. We have installation instructions that come. Every single E1 station that leaves the factory has a set of installation instructions, which are also available on our website www.e1.com, which spells out how to properly install a, a station goes through every step in the process. And that should uh, function as basically a criteria for a startup to take place to ensure that every aspect of the installation has been done correctly. Uh, your name, sir? Dan. Dan. So Dan, wh what we've done over the years because, and I'm really glad you brought this up, uh, a direct correlation between quality of installation and reliability. We don't want a bunch of people uh, not happy with their grinder pump system. That's not an ideal situation for us, okay? So we came up with a certified installation program where we can educate through distribution. If there's a contractor that's installing these, we want to work with them free of charge to teach them how to put them in properly so that they don't have installation related issues down the road. But we don't do it typically. On his question, real sure. quick with the installation. So our situation was it was the 4th of July mm -hmm. and our pump rider went off. And when it was come out to get checked out and we had to pay a lot of money for him traveling on the 4th of July, it turned out that it wasn't installed properly and a bug had actually traveled up the wire and fried the panel because it was never sealed. Because there was no and duct seal. And that was the our problem. Um, How yeah. many houses do you go to where it's the electrician or whoever installed it? So, so what I'm saying is it's not like a pump. It's like they pulled it and, you right. know, it was fine. It was the installed. Right. Manufactured. Un no, we, we warrant manufacturer's defect. How, how many calls outside of it? Uh, I, I don't know an exact number, but we do see snails a lot, bees a lot. When uh, a penetration is made in the back of the panel, rainwater gets in there. That's why our book says to put them in from the bottom. Um, if it's not sealed, if somebody else has uh, taken my lock off and went in there and removed the duct seal. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if if the duct seal's not in there and intact, which is the electrician who puts it in, ants, we've seen, I've seen it all. There's 
So I'm surprised they, they charge you for it because like a couple of weeks after I moved in, there was no duct seal in there. But I mean, were you under warranty when you? No, we were out of warranty. Yeah, yeah. So okay. if I can explain the way that we startups work, okay, there's a, a lot of different ownership uh, models and installation models, right? As E1, we're not in control of, of any of that. We can only make recommendations. So a lot of times with a project, uh, an engineer of record, the guy that, or girl that stamps the plans, will also write a specification. In the specification, they may or may not call for startup in accordance with manufacturer's procedures and recommendations. If they do, that's fantastic. Now we've got uh, some control over the process through distribution. We can inspect things like this, and we can catch it before, early on before it's commissioned so that you don't have that problem on 4th of July. And I feel terrible to hear that. I really do. Um, but if there's no startup required, nobody, no, you know, it, it, you don't have the oversight. And it slips through the cracks, and that, that's what really troubles us. And, that's, and why that's why I was asking if there was like a maintenance plan that we could all get in on and pay that that could have been like there's no seal here and something's going to get in and damage. And I mean, smoke was coming out. Mm -hmm. so, when, we, when we do a service contract, uh, before we'll take on the contract, we will come out, inspect your unit, go through and tell you, okay, we have no duct seal, your push to run button's not working, your wire's magged, your whatever, your connector's been wet. This is how much it costs to bring it up to speed, and then after, if we do that, this is what it'll cost you a year. And I'll tell you, I'll just add it, if, if there's a no duct seal and Freemeyer misses it, and I know Jim is going to agree with this, and that causes a problem, that's on them, that's not on you. Yeah. I would just rather have known that like ahead of time than here's a two thousand dollar bill because I had to drag this guy off the beach with his family on the fourth of July because my grinder pump's going off and I can't get in the box and mm -hmm. can't use our bathroom. <laughs> I can't get the buzzer to shut off. Right. Push the button on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of the questions before was the inspection process, and I want to make sure that we're you know understand how the inspection process worked. Uh, the town had you know had the public portion of the system inspected to whatever the requirements are. Those, that's basically from the shutoff uh, in going from public to private property, right? And then there's also, and this is something that I learned recently, in terms of the inspecting agency, from what I understand, they inspect to the grinder pump or the house plus four feet. They're not necessarily inspecting the rest of it that goes from outside of the grinder pump to the cutoff, right? And we've had some issues recently where they were dry fitted instead of being glued, and that that's a problem. Here's my problem. Well, here's my my issue, right? There, it the site utility companies and typical jobs they inspect up to five feet from the building. Five feet out is the plumbing inspector. If the site utility checked all the forced mains in the street, they should have checked all the ones going to the grinder pump if it was in, in that five feet. So there's a gap there and somebody should have checked it. So a lot of these were put in before the homes were even uh, installed, right? So then they put a, mm, that's called no, a pigtail, no, right? No. Is, that, is that not correct? No. They, they came in, they put the valve, they capped it, and they went away until the homeowner got the inspector to come, or the plumber to come out and install the pump, and the plumber himself is the one that installed the pump to the street. So if the plumbing inspector didn't check it, then somebody should have checked it. It should have been pressure test. Kip, do you have a, anything to add to that, or Steve? You wanna, the, um, Can you just stand up, please? All of the ones that, that we've looked at have a pigtail beyond that valve that's out there near the curb. About a foot, right? No, it's closer to 15 to 18 feet. That pigtail gets the line beyond the electric, the telephone, the cable TV. That's where the plumber is hooking on to the, uh, to the line there to connect to your grinder pump system. Um, I, will, I will tell you, as of now, I haven't seen any that didn't have a pigtail. I'm not saying there might not be something out there, but it's also in the, um, uh, the design specifications from the chrome showing that pigtail on there. Well, the, the drawings that I saw just showed a valve and a gap and a No, because the, the drawings you probably saw were chrome's drawings for the town because that's where the town's responsibility stops. Utilities 
this utility does not go on private property. Um, that's why there's no inspection beyond that on the town's part. So that, that includes the pigtail? That includes the pigtail. That's why the one drawing you saw may have shown that single valve and a kicker because that's where the town's responsibility stops. The pigtail was the responsibility of the, um, the developer, in other words. Which should be under the plumbing inspector? It, that's not under the plumbing inspector because I can tell you for years, and I haven't even seen them do it now, the plumbing inspector, as well as the electrical inspector, will not go any further than five feet past the footprint of the house. Okay, so there, there was a piece of piping that was installed between the pump and the pigtail um, that wasn't tested or inspected or checked out? None of them that I know of. Okay. So, so it, wasn't, it could possibly not have been pressure tested when they installed it. Um, I got some other questions. We can go back to you. Let's uh, see if we can get somebody else. Hey, my name is Adam. I live on Brookfield Drive, original owner for 11 years now, and I'm on my fourth grinder pump. Um, the very first one, obviously, you said five-year warranty. Five years, six months in, it went up. Um, the two teeth that were on the, well, the teeth that were on the bottom of it broke off, got sucked up inside the unit. Obviously, it locked up. Um, after talking to the woman that worked there at the time on the phone and her basically saying, you give me $2,600 plus now or you don't get a pump, obviously, I had to dish out that money. Um, since then, I have purchased the extended warranties myself, and thankfully they've paid off. Obviously, they've paid themselves off, so I'm on my fourth pump now. Um, I received a new, the second pump I received was brand new. It went up within the warranty time, whatever it was. I think it was two years after doing like that. Um, ever since then, I've had rebuilt ones. Uh, I'm on my, obviously, the fourth one out is a rebuilt one. I've never received a new one on the third time or a new one on the fourth time, just a rebuilt one. They've never come back with a brand new one to give me a brand new one. Um, like I said, I'm on an extended warranty now that I pay, I pay for the, whatever the longest one you have. Was it three years? I believe so. so and I paid for it, so it was, like you said, it was several hundred dollars. I think the more years you get, the, it's like I said, it's 300 for one year, maybe 500 for two years, and maybe 600, 700 for three years. I, I paid that just to cover it, and it's paid itself off in the long run. Um, have you never received a bill since you paid for that warranty? Yeah, since I've had the warranty, so I've had to call them out several times, obviously, but... And they came. They came. Okay. And one thing I can say, and I told the gentleman right there when I came in, the techs are awesome. They've been great. They've been very helpful, very friendly, explain everything in detail. Um, that's been the, the one good thing. Obviously, the techs have been great. But they, has um, anybody determined why you've been through four pumps in no, 15 one, years? One thing, I know you have a list up there to show what you can put in it. The one thing that's never been told to me, eggshells. Don't ever, ever put an eggshell in there. And since I was told the very, after the first pump, got one up. I've never put an eggshell in there since. I always go right in the trash can. Now here, why do you have a garbage disposal? I can't put an eggshell in it, but I've seen everybody else do it in their houses, my friends. But not here with a grinder pump. I've never heard that one before. But. And now I have, a, I have a list on the magnet that the gentleman gave me, a little flip of things for the first time. On my refrigerator, it says in detail what I cannot put in. That's it. What I cannot put uh, in my grinder pump. But I said, I'm on my fourth one 11 years, and I heard you say, you know, 8 to 10 years, and the young lady over here said, you know, I think 17 years, nothing goes wrong, God bless you. You know, I'm glad you know, you say that. Like I said, I've done, and every time they've come, they've just they they fished out the bottom, they found nothing in there, nothing that's not supposed to be. So just you know. see, that's a that's a stainless steel shredder ring that's uh, 300 series hardened, you know, and with a rock ball hardness of 50 to 55. For, for teeth to be missing on that, uh, I'm very interested in knowing what happened there. You know, I mean, that's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he first pulled it out, like I said, it was five years after five years and six months after I lived there. I was right. like five years up. Yeah. Um, of course, it always happens when the warranty's not there. But um, one th one question I had when I talked to the lady at the time, and I was told by other people that she's no longer there. There's no type of payment plan. If one goes up, I can't pay you so many hundred a month. It's twenty six hundred, whatever it is right now. Do you have any payment plan in, in place to see if that does go up? I, right we do realize that and and there is um in inside the service contract agreement that's why we spend it out so it is just say it's 322 dollars a year and you pay that every year you know that's a known cost all your grinder pump issues go away one thing i do want to touch base on you say you're on your fourth pump yes, sir. you're actually on your second pump 
the don't count the pump when I said earlier that we come out there and we work on your house and we swap the pump out and we take it back and fix it and put that one in is that I'm, I'm questioning no, is that a swapping the back the first one obviously the teeth broke in and it was locked up never come back they gotta give me a brand new one okay never okay. Ne so never came back never fixed that one with the teeth he said it was, it was not worth it okay. you got a brand new one enjoy it yep. within that two year time period that one went up Okay. He took that one out. He says, I got to take this one back to the shop, look at it. I can give you this spare that Put I have. Okay. So he put the spare in then. So that was my third one. Okay. That spare then went up. He came back, pulled that one. And I had an under, I paid for the warranty, yeah. extra warranty. He pulled that third one out. He said, I got another spare. spare. I'll give you the spare. I have a fun, so I'm on my fourth one now. That was my spare that took it. Remember we were talking about that earlier? <laughs> so I put that spare pump in there. Spares. Like you said, you go back to the shop and you have nothing. Or I can give you a spare now. Right. But my thing is, they never came back to either give me a new one, right? Because I'm under, I was under warranty, right? And, and they and didn't do. But he marked the serial numbers down, like you said. Yep. And I've always called to make sure my file was up to date because yep. I paid for all those hundreds of dollars. Most, of most definitely. And if you got a spare that was stuck in there, luckily this this one's working great. You know, like, uh, yeah, you don't know for it. Okay. <laughs> one of the guys. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm under warranty until I think I'm until Hall Halloween's the date. I always remember <laughs> Halloween's the date. <laughs> Can, can you extend the warranty beyond the three years? Uh, I'm I'm comfortable with three years. I, I don't so like to go further. So when his warranty goes up, he can't extend again. Oh yeah, as long as I'm taking care of his pump. And, and like they said, I, I the, will, tech, the tech will come out, examine everything yeah, top it to just bottom. Goes. Even though I'm still under warranty, they'll still come out like a, don't wait to the very end. Call like a month or so ahead of time. They'll come out, look at it, make sure everything works good. As long as it does, all right, your warranty's you extended. Right no again. problem. Call yeah. the office, they'll renew it. Yep. And, uh, and, and yeah, mind you, if you get to that point, um, you're one guy by yourself. I'm probably one of the three that has the extended warranty. You're one of the three with the warranty. <laughs> why, are, why don't people offer an extended warranty? Mine went up about three years ago. I wasn't even offered an extended warranty. We've been offering to get, you know, I'm not sure how long you've been there or whatever. I'm going to get back to yours real quick. I've been trying since 2012 to get your HOA to put something together so he doesn't have to pay $312. <laughs> if I have, and I'm here's it coming now, I'm saying I've met with him. If I have all the units, this is where I'm going to go off. If I have all the units, I can predict failure. I can predict the costing. Instead of, if I have to gamble as a businessman, I'm going to gamble in my favor, of course. Now we just sat back and we did every service call, every everything, and made a spreadsheet. And I can predict down to pretty much the dollar as low as I can get to keep them going. But if I'm gambling, if I'm doing just one, the gamble's high. If I've got the development, I can service the whole thing. So, You're going to be right around for the $322 covers is the standard. I think we can get right around to $275 to $280 a year, and I can cover every grinder pump in the develop. So being on there, I'm on HOA board. Jason, no way, I, I hope I didn't cost three you, but on HOA board. Does that include just phase two and phase three? Because phase one no. is not part of the HOA. I will come to phase one and look them over. All right, but the, see, the problem is that we collect for phase two and phase three. We do not collect for phase one. So, uh, if, I, like I guess, you know, like you just said, if we can talk a, a price with Howard on a price for phase two and phase three. Maybe we somehow it works with phase one. But we have to we have to take control. You know, we don't have control of phase one. Right. No, I think this is going to be one of those things. You're not going to be able to guarantee every single person is going to do it. No. And this is one of those things where the HOA and, and that's, and can that's say, "Hey, it's point. open to everybody. Right. Here's what the price is. If we get, right. you know, a minimal number, yeah, the phase one, phase two, the phase three. Funds. These are individual right. private owners that could buy right. into the. Chris, service. Chris touched on something that someone needs to take charge and and be the go-to. Okay. Right. right now, I go to every home okay. and if we had everybody single, together in some way shape contact. or form that would make it a lot easier can i just single point of contact for the hoas right there for phase two and phase three there's phase your single three. point quality one can't tell you about phase one because they were let out of the hoa by tom spurl so that's between tom spurl and phase one there's a gentleman in the back that had a question early on oh, sorry. You can be included. You can be included. i would like to share something uh, we live eight years in the neighborhood, and the first year, the pump alarm went off, and the guy came out, and he, he pulled the pump out, and he said, yeah, we find, we find the silent killer. I said, what do you mean? And what he showed me was the grease, the fat, 
the fat that it get cold in the winter, but the fat dust goes up and it forms really big paddles of fat. And he said when that goes in the grinder, it stops the grinder and then it goes up in smoke. He said, you know, and since then, you know, we haven't had any problems for eight years. So I followed that. I not put grease in there. And you can see it in the sink. When you have a little butter in the sink and you want to clean it, you need really hot water to clean it, right? Now the pump has a problem with to grind that away. You know, and it goes in your in your and everything what you have. One thing and then we had eggshells brought up, we've had grease brought up. Uh, I have eight of these left because we give them out all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is online. This is your E1 user's guide. You go in there and it has got everything that you need inside of it. What you do, what to not do, how it works, draw into the pump. And I'm going to send it out to everybody in phase two and three. So you guys will get all that by email and mail. Yep. So. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm just confused. Were you saying that if everybody pays a certain amount per year that you could cover all the, the grinder pumps? Like what, what was that amount if everybody got together and paid? Roughly around $275 per unit per year. Per year. So two hundred. It's not everybody. It's not if everybody pay, it pays. It's I think it's you need a certain number. Yeah, I'm I'm doing the math. Right, you're not doing the full on the entire way. community. Okay, so that number is going to go up. So nobody would ever have a three thousand dollar replacement bill or a seven hundred to three thousand dollar. If everybody got the service right. If everybody got the service. Right. Play, play Jiminy Cricketer. Be careful of that statement because there is the possibility of still having. It doesn't protect against like Where lightning strikes uh -huh. and ca cas catastrophic okay. events and user dance. So not following the guidebook. Right. So if, you, if we if it comes out and the pump was torn up because of abuse, that doesn't that's follow. That's not a warning. That's yeah. There's a okay. or sir. And let, it, that's like the other. There's a, a lot of us are frustrated because when we bought the homes, nobody informed us of grinder pumps. Mm -hmm. The realtors are not saying anything because they don't want to lose a sale, and therefore we go completely in the dark. Like, what is that on Until the side of our house? Big red light. It's very buzzes very at two in the morning. We're not offered any warranties. Uh, at all, and uh, we're not given the opportunity to have it inspected before we go to settlement on a home. And now here we are. Uh, I don't know of too many families <clears throat> who have fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars sitting around Wait. to um, it, it, to make these repairs. And furthermore, when this goes up, it's not like an AC unit because we can we can deal with heat, but we cannot deal with not going to the bathroom in our home. Right. So something needs to be done. I mean, if, if something, I would be all for if something. I'm going I'm to give your HOA, <clears throat> this is my language for my service mm -hmm. contract agreement, mm -hmm. and they can pass that out to you through email. You said you got them all on e-blast. And they'll do paper as well. Yep. Sir, this this uh, woman's had her hand up yep. for quite some time. I just want to, we'll come We've back. We've heard in phase two that there was a plastic check belt. Is that the problem right. that went wrong? Yeah, this, this one right here. Okay. Is there any way for us who are in the newer part of phase three to know whether we have plastic and should anticipate this or not? So, so that's one of the other things we wanted to cover tonight, why I wanted to kind of get done early with the Q&A. We have had uh, several uh, over the past six months or so failures of those. And Jim had alluded to it in that there was a pump alarm that was going off and they couldn't figure out what the reason was. And every, you know, finally they figured out that it was a faulty check valve and the whole thing had to be dug up at the, at the street. It was found out that it was that plastic one and, that, and then it had to be replaced. So every one that we've dug up has been, has been broken or faulty, right, that we've, that we've investigated with that issue. Oh, with the exception of one. With the one. exception of one. And that was the one that was dry fit, right? Is that the one that was dry That's fit? That's the one that had the PVC that okay. was dry fit. Yep. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we recommend, and, and so we believe that if there's a if if there's a check valve, it's the plastic one, right? And and it's going to fail at some point, or there's not a check valve at all, right? So we believe that it's in the best interest of the homeowners to 
have those dug up and replaced. Because when that does fail, it's gonna be on July 4th, and you're gonna to have to have those guys come out, and it's gonna be very, very expensive. And it's not gonna be E1 or any, any of that stuff, and that's not gonna be covered by uh, any kind of a maintenance contract. So one of our goals is to work with the HOA to come up with, to figure out a way to find contractors who will be able to go in there on a community-wide basis and replace those, right? That's gonna be on, the cost is gonna be on the homeowner to do that, but what we wanna be able to do is, is work with Howard and come up with, we've got these three or four contractors, they're able to come out, they're gonna do all of them or many of them or whoever wants to have them done and put in the good, the good one, which is the metal one that's, that's over there, okay? Who approved the plastic checked out? Who approved it? to put plastic in there. That was a function of the developer. It was it was a recommendation that a check valve be put in. Well, hold on a second. Okay. I'm sorry to say, I, I'm, I'm questioning that real quick, only because um, it was told me that um, after the valves, there was a whip that was installed another 15 feet, and those check valves are right at the valve, or at least five <coughs> feet of it, a couple feet of it. So if the, if the site guy installed it, or was it the plumber? And then where did the plumber tie into versus where the site guy stopped? So I guess we're all just speculating, but I don't know that anybody really knows it for sure though, right? Who made the decision to put them in? Whoever was putting the yeah. system in made those yeah. decisions. So the recommendation from the manufacturer, and Chris, if I'm, if I'm not saying the right thing here, please let me know. The recommendation for the manufacturer is to have a check valve put as close to the street as possible, okay? they didn't get into the specifics on what type of a check valve should have been put in. And, and when you get this frequently asked questions, it talks, about, it talks about, you know, putting in the cheap one or putting in the, the expensive one. Uh, I, I can't speculate on the reasoning, but are there, have other decisions been made up there to go with the cheap route or to go the expensive route? So this is a community-wide thing, right? So let me understand. It goes from our pump to the street, and everyone else on my street is going up towards just wherever you guys send the sewer out, right? Mm -hmm. With the check valve there. So if I decide to dig it out myself and put an elbow in, I would screw my entire street, right? So no. this should no. be on a... The way it works, uh, sir, is um, you have, you've got a grinder pump. Hand me that now. This one? Yeah, the one on the right. Uh, so this is this is E one's stainless steel unilateral. It's an isolation valve. It's a flapper style check valve and a clean clean out. Um, but to get back to your question, um, you've got a station right where your tank is, and you've got a lateral that or discharge that exits that station. You should have a check valve on your lateral. After the lateral would come uh, uh, force main. The force main is the common pipe that your your neighbors right. are going to be pumping into. So if you isolate your lateral, it should have no impact whatsoever on the force main itself. If you don't have a lateral, you could have system pressure at the tank, and that could present a different set of problems. Um, this is the one that, that we make because um, we noticed over the years that, you know, with the old style, uh, you're relying on a person to glue them together, you're relying on somebody to inspect them, and it causes problems. So we came up with this, which is factory tested and, uh, you know, is something that... Does uh, it come with the system that you sell him? Yes. They sell? Yes. But does I it come with them now? It is an option. So it's an option. We provide this as an as an option. You know, we don't, it's not. So, you know, what is there code as to what do you got? Is there a code for what has to be put in? There's no code. Okay. So, but but it's part of the plumbing infrastructure. So there's no plumbing code that says it has to be there or done. Okay. Doesn't the code say that all the check valves underground have to be serviceable? I'm sorry. He's asking them. I'm sorry. That part I, I'll tell you that part I can't answer. Okay. Um, again, that's on. What is, what is the code here? Is it international? National? International. Is yeah. it international? Yeah. 2016? No. The 2011. 2011. The last. Well, remember when the houses were put in, like in 2001, whatever the code was back yeah, then. That's fine. All right. Let's. Can we move on to other people who have other questions? Because it's it, we're getting kind of late here. Yes, ma'am. I really have a concern now, even though I haven't had any problems. So if you can explain more to me about the box at the house with the lock. Um, could someone check mine to make sure it's got the proper sealing so we won't have a bug or something to fry wire? And is it something at the street level that if we see 
water or wet spots around our drain spot at the street level. My husband's been noticing that for months and months and months now. He said, I wonder what that is. I wonder if that's coming from the grinder pump. So our street is wet right off from my house all the time. No rain, no nothing. So something is leaking there in the street. What street are you on? Uh, Eden Dairy, phase one. Phase one, Eden Dairy. So Kip will write, you know, write down your information as well. Mr. Kip is taking <laughs> Avenue. So I have some concerns there. Even though it's not giving me a alarm signal, nothing's happening in the house, it's something that's going wrong now that I'm hearing all of this. Something's up. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. Uh, can I answer your question? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, just one sec. The next time my guys are in the neighborhood, uh, one. 36 Eden Dairy. 164. 164. Got it. Let's go by and do a sniff test. And see. <laughs> but she also asked about inspecting to make sure there's everything sealed in that. I, I would imagine I would love that done too. How do we know that it was installed properly? I'm going to inspect. I'll pay the price because I want to prevent. If I can prevent something, let me prevent it. And I think you had said earlier that's one of the things about if you're going to go with a warranty, you're going to come out and do the inspection and say, here's what you need to here's what you need to do to bring it up to speed, up to up to up to uh, you're warranty, warranty, yeah, warranty. Yeah. And if you uh, if you give us a call, my cards are up here. I'll try to um, get it. You know, if you're interested in the service contract, you're going to probably go through the HOA anyhow. But yeah, instead of waiting for that time. And you want they're us to come out? They're not part of the HOA. Oh, you're phase one? I, that's right. I'm not throwing you out. I'd like to get involved in Understand, my pumps are in all three phases. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure that we're talking about everybody's pump. Uh, the HOA is not mine. Go ahead. Yeah, in the back there. So uh, the question I have is, I, I'm sure everybody's had an individual experience, or at least most people have heard, has some kind of individual experience. But it's a systemic problem, is what it seems like. Dan is on to something that's kind of a systemic uh, issue, and I'd like to hear more about that, to be honest with you, because I think what we need to do is try to solve something that's a, a much bigger issue than just our in own individual homes. Uh, although we're all concerned about our individual homes, we should look at it as a community. And I think that we're missing out on that point right now. So I would like to defer a little yeah. bit more time to Dan, if you don't mind. I think that's great. Um, my, well, I have kind of a, a strange question. It's, um, I've heard from a couple other people. I've, they've never said it to me. But uh, the question is brought up about the uh, replacement pumps outside of E1. Um, I was told by um, Centerville that it wasn't a problem to go ahead and switch it out. Um, it was, it, from what I understood, it was... Um, and now, like I said, I'm not, I'm only, I'm only, this is hearsay, so I'm not saying it, but there was a rumor that uh, was going around that you guys were telling people that they couldn't change out the pumps because it wouldn't meet um, the town requirements. I heard that, I heard that um, we were at a, a last town meeting that, that I went to that even was brought up. Understand, you own the system, okay? I fix provide service and support environment one grinder pumps. Right. If you choose to go to a supplier, purchase another pump, stick it in that hole, mm -hmm. there's nothing I, okay. nor the town, I don't want to speak for them, can do about it. However, if you have that situation, buyer beware. If you buy, and I'm, there's, there's a reason everybody makes a E1 drop-in unit is because they want to be in that market. Mm -hmm. Buyer beware. Watch your warranty. Look at your warranty. Look at your reliability. Yeah. The, I have a pile the, of the, my competitors' the, pumps. The only, the only difference right with that out. is that I can get anybody to come work on my Zola pump, and I don't have to call you guys. Correct. Who are you going to exactly? I'm going to get charged two hundred and some dollars for you to travel out. Most definitely. I understand. I hear you. We support the E1 product. There is, you know, I just, I just wanted the, they're, they're all out there. That there's, wasn't the case. there's a bunch of them, and there is, our, I can only work on my equipment. You know, we right. make a great product. Yeah, I mean, 17 years on a pump, 15 years on a pump, 14 years on a pump. 
I would love, you're very pump knowledgeable. Me and you could have a discussion in a cold beer for hours about which pump's better than the other pump. <laughs> but, so I get that question quite a bit up. too about, and the only thing I would say, I mean obviously it's a, it's a free market system that we have, mm -hmm. you can call anybody you want. Sure. The only bit of advice I would give you is understand the hydraulic condition and what the hydraulic capability or the duty point uh, of the pump that's going in the hole is. Mm -hmm. Because what, as a regional manager I mentioned 12 states, 7 Canadian provinces, lots of people call me, they share concerns, questions, and they'll say hey, I put this other pump in the ground. Now the alarm's going off all the time, and lo and behold, it can't overcome force main pressure. So no, no, I be aware of that kind of yeah, silly yeah. advice I could get, but I, call I anybody think, you want. I think one big thing that I think everybody's kind of hitting on but, but, but not pointing at it is the fact that since it is exclusive to Freemire, um, where this property is located, just the cost for them to come out and investigate it is unfortunately unacceptable. It's what, $270? It starts. That's where it starts. 115. Or okay, 115, and that's before they get there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, as E1, as many countries as you're in, as many states as you're in, one person in a hundred mile radius of this community is not enough. What is your uh, What is your response time? I mean, typically, <clears throat> I can be I can be there. We we pretty much choke down two hours. So two you hours. know, sometimes longer. Two hours, but they pay for that two hours. No, 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 no. no. Well, what's the 115? The 115 is your travel time. That's coming in. That's your travel time from point A to point B. So you're paying. So you're paying for it. Most definitely. You're good. I mean, dude. Okay. Well, I mean, you just said no. Now, <laughs> if, you, if you have, uh, my guy's going to call you back in two hours. I've done service He's, work a long time. Right. I I got it. I got to pay the for trucks, is, fuels, we've everything. Monopoly. We've got a monopoly right now. No, hold on a sec. With, with the pumps that are installed and people that can't afford to swap them out, we can't call Joe Schmo down the street. We have to call you guys, which is fine. Obviously, E1 trusts you guys, and that's fair. It's the it's the $230 every, every shot just to come out and see what's wrong. Is that what I'm hearing around me is right. the heartburn. So, and it's $230 just to come out. Okay, but you can take that same at put thirty more dollars on top of it once a year, and you never have to worry about it. This you got. I mean, off hours, holidays, twenty four seven. I mean, if if you're on a holiday and you're on a service contract, you got to we got to come out. That's that's part of it. I like to go back to your check valve. The check valve that you were holding up was that metal, and did you or did you not say that was an option to have a metal? So and this if, is. If it was an option for them to put it in, why didn't the homeowner know to get the option? I want metal versus plastic stuck down in the ground. So this I this uh, service the valve. So this check valve's been out since I think about 2010. Okay. Well, okay to know about. So uh, this would, so here, here, that's something that an engineer has to specify, sir. I mean, if the engineer's, it was an option. Yeah, that's correct. It's and, and if, we, we don't sell homes. We sell the pumps and the equipment. Right. So, so we're going to get stuff fixing the plastic. their plastic because somebody went the cheap route. Yes. So I, put it on their homeowner. Well, yeah. that's fair. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I agree with it. What's the cost to, to get us fixed now? I just so everyone has an idea. I mean, but if you're going to go from plastic, I don't know, normal big Monday, it's three, eight, it's eight three, in the morning. what, 380 for the valve, it's, or for the check yeah. valve? And you have 230 to come out. You got somebody that got to go. I don't install. So, so that would be a, provider, guys. a that, factor that's of the plumber, right? So, right, so exactly. that's going to cost, what, $300 for that Rusty. particular thing? Plus, yeah, now you got to get somebody out with a backhoe who's going to dig it up. I mean, you're talking like probably, depending. yeah, 800 to $2,000, depending on when, old, when it is. Is that what this, 50 Oh, no, no, no. 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 Okay. no. It's on your property. He's going to get it. You put an inferior product, and now you want us to fix it. It just doesn't make I sense. That was the developer, right? The builder put the inferior product in. The builder put that in there. Well, whoever, I don't care. I'm not pointing well, I'm just saying it's not fair to the homeowner that go out in the street because there's inferior products out there and you want us to pay for it. Why don't we split it? That would be the nice thing to do. Was it the builder or the developer? Because we had three different builders. 
So it's actually the four different builders. Mm -hmm. I have to assume it was the developer. It's the builder. Well, the builder is the part that people that buy the lumber and the parts for the houses. The it's not the developer. It goes to the curb. The builder is from the curb to the house. Everything inside. Oh, yeah. so, so how do we know what each of us has? You don't. You don't know, That's and you, prob do you probably have the plastic one. So that was kind of the segue that I wanted to take into the next step, right? I think there's, you know, we, we talk about wanting to solve this problem as a community, right? The last time we had this, there was a lot of these streets that, that we had a meeting like this, there was a lot of streets that weren't there, there was a lot less people that were living there. Um, Jim had come up and said, you know, we'd love to get some people into warranty, I don't know how many uh, individuals you did an inspection, I think there were 17 or 20, and they ended up getting three. Right, so I think one of the s solutions we want to get here is let's get a lot more of you on that, uh, you know, on the maintenance agreement, the, the warranty agreement, if we can. That's going to hopefully solve one issue. Is this, is this, is this so, so then there's the second part, right? The second part is is that at some point we believe that these check valves are going to fail. Okay, there's also some houses that don't have them at all, and we recommend that those get put in, the good ones. So. You know, we think that's a function of the homeowners association needs to help and figure out. Let's get some contractors who are going to be able to come in at a fixed price and dig these up and replace them. Now, that's going to obviously cost the homeowner a considerable amount of money. One of the things that that the town is looking into is how can we help uh, you afford it, right? I know that I couldn't go put a $1,500 system in this weekend. So one of the things I, we had our attorney, our, our town attorney look into is what's called a special taxing district. I don't want to get into all the details about it, but basically Northbrook as a community would be put into a special taxing district and the town would pay for, would front the money for the replacement. So digging it up, putting it in, making sure it works, and then that payment would be paid back through your taxes over time. We believe that it would be, I, I think that it would be transferable as well, so if you moved it would just go, it would go on to your taxes. But the complicated part about that is, is that two thirds of the two thirds of the property owners have to agree to it, and then two thirds of the total assessed value have to agree to it as well, right? So it would only cost you as a special taxing district if you decided you wanted to have it dug up. So let's say we, 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 we designate all of Northbrook phase one, two, and three, 430 homes, a special taxing district. If you decide that you want to have your check valve dug up and have the new stainless steel one put in, we would come up with whatever the legal agreement is, you would get it done, you wouldn't have to pay for it tomorrow, you would then have to pay for it over however long it would be through your taxes, right? If you decided you didn't want to do it, you know, you don't have to do it. Then you might risk the fact on July 4th when you have that bubbling or some problem happening and the check valve does fail, and now you're paying for Freemire to come out and figure out that it is a check valve issue, and then you got to get it done. That's going to be much more expensive. So I, I agree with that. Good on what you said, more, but there's still nine homes that need to be built. Are they going to get the plastic one put in? Are they going to get the metal one so, put in? So what we have found is we were told that there are homes that are being built in phase three that right. had no check valves put in at all. We inspected one, right, that, that hadn't had any of that done, and we found there's no check valve. So now before any permits are being issued, we're requiring that they put those in, right? Along with the permit, they're putting in the actual check valve, and we're inspecting the it, one. the metal one, okay. and we're inspecting those. If, if, if we were to find that the plastic one doesn't meet code, then we sh should be able to go back after the builder? You know, I'm not an attorney. I don't know what the statute of limitations is. I'm not sure. Right. It would be something to look into. And here's the thing, right? I've heard about class action lawsuits and going after the builder and all that kind of stuff. I get it, and I think that's a great idea. The issue is let's get these things fixed, right? Let's get these things taken care of. And if for some reason you are able to go back to the builder and you win, they're going to pay off that special taxing thing, or they're going to they'll, they'll pay that, you know, as part of whatever settlement they would pay that off. I have no idea about the statute of limitations or whether the plastic is okay or not. What I'm saying is, is that I think you know, we should figure out a way to get, if you are interested, getting your check valve replaced or installed, right? And if there's a way that the town can help you do that, uh, we want to be able to do that. He's had a question for a long time. Back. Yes, sir, in the back. Yeah, uh, thank you. We've been in the neighborhood about a year, so, and others may know this, but I really don't know 
no pun intended, why we're walking on eggshells with these pumps that they're so sensitive. I mean, what's the whole concept behind putting grinder pumps in this development? I know plenty of people who live in the town proper, flush their toilets, throw things down their sink, goes into town sewage system. What, what's the big deal about grinders in this neighborhood? So you may have gotten here a couple minutes after we started, and I kind of talked about the, the geography of of Northbrook. It will be on, you know, it's going to be on TV. It, it has to do with the developer didn't want to put in big, big uh, lift pumps. Are there any other questions? We've got a couple more minutes here before we finish up. Yes, ma'am. No question. Just a comment about the attorney from personal experience. We went to Montgomery County to get an attorney. We wanted to be away from Queen Anne's County to go against the builder. We went back to the county inspector on an issue we had in our home, and we were told we just need to suck it up. My husband said, I want you to stop stressing. We're going to spend the money. He said, because the builder is so big, they will break you before you beat them. So the attorney ain't going to do it going against the builder. You would not be able to sustain this financially. What's the probability of getting this special tax area? So two thirds of the property owners and two thirds of the assessed value, right? So you could have 400 homes, right? But if Northbrook is, is not really a good example because most of the homes are probably relatively the same, valued the same. But if somebody owned one little piece of property and it wasn't worth very much and someone owned a big piece of property and it was, both of those have to decide. So, you know, we are happy to work with our attorney and figure out what the language is to make that happen. There would have to be something that would be circulated between phase one, two, and three, and two thirds of both of those groups would have to, to uh, sign off on that, and that would be binding. So, you know, once two thirds signed off on it, the entire area could be then a taxing district. But again, I want to, you know, make sure that you realize that it's the intent would be that only though you're all in the taxing district, but only those who want to have the system, you know, have the, the check valve replaced. Would, would get that tax. Everybody would get the benefit of it. But unlike other special taxing districts, only those individuals who are going to get it replaced. Yes, ma'am. And would you negotiate group pricing on that? That's one of the things I think we would want the homeowners association to do, right? They have the ability to then say, we've got 400 homes that need, or however many they, they, that need to get installed. You know, we, we're going to do 200 of them, however many people decide to sign up. And I think that's when you're going to get a better price. You're not going to get a good price if it's, I got an emergency, I got to get it done. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've got a question with the warranty, which I think a lot of people in this room are probably going to be interested in, and grease. When I moved into our home, we don't dump grease down the sink, but a month after we moved in, something failed. And, and he came out, pulled out the thing, and there was tons of grease in there. And he goes, holy cow, look at all this grease. And I'm like, I've been here a month. He goes, wow, that's a lot of grease. And I know we're not dumping grease down. The, you know, it's rinse your, your dinner dishes that you, or your pots that you've cleaned up. And that, and so, you know. Is it a new home? It, it was, it's, we're now there four years, but we were there only a month when he made the comment about all the grease. And if you're saying that owner, if, if, that we can um, invalidate a warranty if we get the extended warranty if grease is one of those things on there. What's an acceptable list? I mean, there's regular living that you you know you cook right. something, you wash it in your right. sink, and that grease is going to go down there. If if my guy pulled the pump out and said, "Oh wow, there's a lot of grease." Mm -hmm. We go to some nasty places. It's got to be a lot of grease to make one of our guys say that. So. You know, I, I don't know how much grease you had, what you had in there. Uh, bacon frying pans people don't realize how much goes down oil on your skin down to the beach we see a difference down to the beach just because of suntan oil that gets on people and comes into their house they don't even think about it. so it does collect so, so we would generally come down and say look here's the problem am i going to board warranted kenny i'll tell you right now i suck up way more than i should when it comes to people who have service contracts with me because if you're not happy i don't get my service contract back right so it's my goal to do that. We've eaten way more than we should have on service contracts. I would, at that point, educate and say, Kenny, you know, you got to tell these people if this is the third time we've been here and it's grease, you know, there's nothing more I can do well, about it. Well, please have a maintenance issue that you cleaned out once a year before it gets cold or it freezes up or it gets... 
there's no required, there's no preventative maintenance required no. on these systems. The, the system can handle grease. It's just excessive grease. Now where it gets gray is well, how much is excessive. Right. We've, we've seen grinder pumps that are just don't look like grinder pumps because there's so much grease because people are literally dumping containers full of oil down the drain. That happens. Uh, that would be considered an excessive situation. It's never going to uh, prevent the pump from grinding, but it might interfere with the controls. It would with with uh, an E1 station or a $100,000 lift station in a gravity system could also be impacted by excessive grease. Um, but it, 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 we don't quantify it down to an amount. That would be impossible to do. But why wouldn't that be a maintenance issue to clean it out frequently? Uh, some some uh, agencies opt to do that. We, d we do yeah. have c commercial users that have the Environment One grinder pump, and we will tell them, guys, you got to maintain one to bait your grease trap. But it gets through your grease trap because you flow so much water, you need to pump your tank out once a year. If I come to your place <laughs> the first time, I'm going to tell you about grease. The second time, I'm going to be like, hey, we come here. We've been now. I have a window. I've been there twice in three years, and it's grease here and grease here. Well, at year and a half, you need to do something about your grease, and we'll recommend that to keep your warranty going and say do something about your grease. It's your own. I think we got time for one, one more question. Did you have one in the back? You want to leave? just get out one more? Last one. I promise. Oh, it, <laughs> so, so I just want to make sure that we get the information as far as what the designer had in store for maintenance the pipes. And whatever we have or whatever we can get, we will certainly get that. I mean, I'm not sure if we have, you know, in a sewer system like this, if there's a, a maintenance kit. Do you want to answer that? I can tell you that I haven't seen it. All right. I can tell you that uh, we can try and find it with McCrone. The difference is we didn't hire McCrone. We, excuse me, the utility, the town did not hire McCrone. So anything that McCrone has for this project belongs to the developer, okay? Um, I will tell you, you probably have just as good a chance as I do at calling McCrone and saying, can we get the specifications for when this system was put in? Well, and I, I can tell you HOA would probably have a better shot than me. Mm -hmm. The HOA can try it, and I, I'm but if not, they, but I think the question is, though, but if they turned it over, if the system, he's talking the system, the, the pipes in the streets, which are now yours. I understand that. So if there were, if there were service instructions or maintenance, routine maintenance instructions, that would be something the town's responsible for. Something the town should have. Right. I can only tell you that I've been here four and a half years. Steve's been here five, five and a half years. There were people here, have been here and gone since then. And I will tell you, I haven't seen it in any of my, my stuff. I don't know that Steve has. Tim's lived here and been on council longer than, than me and Steve. And I don't know that Tim is aware of it. Uh, that's not a good answer, but that's the best I can give you. So that's something we need to investigate and look and see. Did you ever ask find. for it? Did we ever ask for it? Yes. No, I can tell you, no, we didn't ask for it. It's okay. So back to us again. It's our fault because the stuff's failed. No, because I'm not so saying it's your fault. What I'm saying is we haven't had a reason on our side to investigate. Well, on the utility all side. The time with grinder pumps going up, and you guys know about it, so there's a reason to ask. What I'm trying to tell you is, you're trying to say that it's the utility's fault that your grinder pumps are going up. I we think just heard, valve has a lot to do with it, to tell you the truth. I just, I just think the numbers awesome. speak for it. If you've got a representation of roughly 15% of the community here, and you've got 10% are, 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 are having issues with it, and with um, you, you proudly talk about your product, but from here, would you be happy with the service, with performance of your product from what you've heard here? I don't. I don't think it's an issue. I mean, there, again, I started off by talking about quality of installation, ongoing maintenance. Maintenance includes not only you know it includes flushing lines, it includes manipulating air release valves. It's assuming that they're installed. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into a grinder pump system, in addition to a pump. This is a less than ideal situation. I will acknowledge that on behalf of Environment One, but to me, it speaks volumes of the importance of uh, adequate ownership model, frankly. And see, that's not just, that's just not the pump. It's just not us. It's, right. it's the, the entire system. system. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think one of the other things that needs to be brought up too is, and I, I just realized this talking to Kip, there's a few other homes in the area that have the grinder pumps that aren't in North Pearl. I think they need to be included if we do the special taxing district where they're allowed to come in if they want to to make sure that they have yeah, the property absolutely. because they're going to be older than North Pearl, mm -hmm. a lot older than North Pearl. So. Mm -hmm. And they're right. They're right near there. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So we would certainly be able to. And they were included. They were invited tonight. It's three. Yeah. We did there. deliver those things. So it's eight thirty-five, guys. I want to thank everyone for coming. I think this is going to be the biggest audience the uh, HOA has, has ever had uh, for their meeting. Again, I want to thank Chris and Jim and his team for coming out. Uh, I will stay here. I'll be sitting in the back of the room. If you have questions for me, if it's not related to any of this, I'm happy to sit and, and talk and.